Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we are going to keep things off with a couple of things from Intel, the first of which is regarding an SOC by the name of Elkhart Lake. Now this piece of information actually comes to us thanks to an update to Intel's GFX patch, and basically the update to these drivers drops hints of a new low power SOC which apparently is being developed when it is naturally going to be codenamed Elkhart Lake and is going to be a 10nm SoC that is based on the Tremont architecture and the iGPU is going to be, well, you guessed it, Gen 11. Now, of course, Gen 11 is debuting with Ice Lake and I would not be surprised at all to see some more lower power offerings, so this would make perfect sense. Now, this by no means 110% confirmation that we will ever see a... CPU with this name or based on this particular code name or however you want to word it actually release it just means that they are definitely working on something but the fact that it's being included in the patch leads me to believe that yes we're most likely going to be seeing something because they are obviously preparing for its release but of course we don't really know much else so it's really hard to make any real speculations I'm just very interested to see what it has to offer because well Ice Lake has proven itself to be rather interesting and I would definitely be curious to see what a lower power offering had to bring to the table. But the second thing I actually want to discuss today with Intel at least is an interview with Raja Kadori. Now this interview was actually conducted by Barons.com and a link to their article is going to be linked in the description below this video. Now they discussed a few things in this interview so I would highly suggest you give it a read because I'm only going to go through a couple of questions here. But the first of which is actually going to be what I would argue the most interesting and that is exactly why Raja decided to leave AMD for Intel. And Raja actually said, quote, when I took a break from AMD, my thinking was, what am I going to do for the next 10 years? What is the problem statement for the world for the next 10 years? Where I landed was, we're in the middle of a data explosion. The amount of data that is being generated in the world is way more than our ability to analyze, understand, and process. What are the technologies that are required for us to be able to keep up with the data and actually do some beautiful, amazing things with this data? As I was thinking through that and the elements that are required, the core pieces of technology required and which company had these assets these people these resources the only company that checked my list was intel now another thing that they discussed that i actually want to touch on here is regarding well their graphics we're kind of in a graphic steam at the moment and basically asking whether or not he's confident that they're actually going to have a fully competitive gpu in both the discrete and integrated graphics segments and he said quote absolutely you know one of those things that most people externally don't realize is that intel has been doing graphics for a long long time we have 4,500 people. As you know, graphics is much about software as it is about hardware. I want to set the record straight that Intel has a world-class design team sitting here. What I'm doing is helping them figure out how to build products that scale up from the low power mobile domain up to petaflops, the big data center GPUs. Both internally and externally, there's a lot of excitement from our customers, from enthusiasts, from the market about our entry into discrete graphics in 2020. And yes, I would agree with that. I am very interested to see exactly what is going on with their discrete graphics cards. We, of course, have seen a leaked benchmark recently for their Gen 11 iGPU, and it looks really, really promising, to be honest with you. So if the iGPU is bringing that to the table, well, then what is the discrete graphics going to bring? I think it's definitely going to be one to watch for sure. There were some recent comments made by a chap whose name genuinely escapes me that he believed that we would not see Intel XE topple the top dog, that being the RTX 2080 Ti, because, well, it's, it's Intel's first offering. And I would say that's not a unreasonable thing to say. I would say that they're probably not going to topple the 2080 tie on their first attempt. However, what I am expecting is for them to release something that is extremely competitive, maybe even matching it or falling just below it. But I would not be all that surprised to see Intel take everything they learned and release an absolute monster the next time around. So even if it doesn't beat the RTX 2080 tie, that doesn't mean it's a failure. It just, well, means it's not the best of the best. But the, that doesn't mean it won't be extremely competitive in the marketplace because Raja has a point. While Intel are making their entry into discrete graphics, they have been doing graphics for a long time. Now there is obviously a difference between the two. 
but they've obviously got a lot to offer there in terms of knowledge and of course Raja has a lot to offer as well so it's definitely going to be one to watch. Anyway we're going to move over from Intel to Microsoft as they have issued some fix some issues, should I say, with Windows 10. Now, you may remember back early this month, or 1st of March to be exact, there was a Windows update by the highly catchy name W, so KB, should I say, 4482887, and this issued, or addressed a bunch of issues, should I say, but unfortunately, by trying to fix these problems, Microsoft created a whole bunch of other ones, and one of the problems that it created was a negative impact on gaming performance in games such as Destiny 2 and Call of Duty and also caused significant mouse stuttering and graphics degradation. Thankfully, however, Microsoft has now patched out the bug with a new update, KB4489899, and this was released on March the 12th, so Tuesday just gone. And the update, quote, addresses an issue that may degrade graphics and mouse performance with desktop gaming when playing certain games, such as Destiny after installing KB4482887. Now this isn't the only implementation of a fix that we have for this particular update of course. We also see the implementation of the Repline mitigation for Spectre Variant 2 which of course I discussed not all that long ago which is for use with older AMT or Intel processors. Now, it's important to note here that Repli was not to blame for the performance degradation as you actually have to manually activate it on compatible systems, so it wasn't Spectre patches raising their ugly head again to impact performance. Now, I'm not going to go through the full patch notes because I'll be here, be here until Christmas. There is, unsurprisingly, quite a bit to go through here. So I will include a link to the full patch notes in the description below this video. I would highly suggest you give them a read. Everything is there. If you're wondering what else this brings to the table, go check that out. So from Microsoft, let's move over to Sony, shall we? Now you may have seen the reports doing the rounds yesterday that Sony were seriously considering buying Take-Two, who... I'm sure you don't need reminding, own Rockstar and 2K. Now, this arose thanks to a Market Watch report that quoted a Wedbush Securities analyst by the name of Joel Kalina saying that, quote, Sony is an advanced deal level discussions to acquire Take Two Interactive in a mostly cash deal. But Joel has actually clarified this somewhat in a interview with gamesindustry.biz which I have linked in the description below this video and he said quote this is purely unconfirmed market speculation that is making the rounds I am not the source of this story in any regard I'm not sure who quoted me as I didn't speak with anyone over the phone unless someone saw a trading note that I wrote and Market Watch did state in their original report that it was due to a note published by Kalina. So Joel is basically saying that, look, this was just speculation. This is not confirmed by any means. I mean, it may be happening. It may possibly be considered by Sony. Maybe they are this close to purchasing Take-Two. It's really hard to say. But this is by no means anything concrete by no stretch of the imagination. Now, it's obviously very possible that Sony is wanting to do this, and to be honest, I wouldn't be all that surprised, even if it wasn't Take-Two specifically, I wouldn't be surprised to see them try to purchase some big name companies like this, because, well, Microsoft have not been shy about the fact they've been snapping up game developers and publishing houses left, right, and center to really try and bolster their games lineup for the next iteration of Xbox, because, well, the lack of exclusives on the Xbox One, it has become a bit of a meme for obvious reasons. So obviously Sony are pretty confident in their first party releases, but you need strong third parties as well. Even if they're only timed exclusives, or obviously even better exclusives, you need them. So it would make sense for Sony to at least try to purchase a big company, whether or not Take-Two would be willing to be sold is another matter entirely. But basically, just sprinkle a lot, and I do mean a lot of salt, over those rumours that you heard yesterday regarding Sony purchasing Take-Two. Oh, and just a quick sort of add-on here for the end of the video, the uh, GTX, almost said RTX then, GTX 1660 6 gig graphics card has officially launched. And with prices starting at two hundred nineteen, two hundred nineteen, excuse me, dollars ninety nine. Now Paul did manage to do some benchmarking before shooting off to an event, 
Um, and we'll, so we'd expect to see that probably when he gets back, um, he's most likely going to be doing a video update on exactly what he's going to be up to. So keep your eyes peeled for that because I don't want to spoil the surprise for you guys. I'm going to leave that down to him because it's pretty damn exciting if I do say so myself. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is so much appreciated by both myself and Paul. Give us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.